lecture number 2, chapter 7. Today's video is about topic 7.1, asynchronous and synchronous counter. Focus on type of asynchronous counter. Let's start. Outcomes for this video is students should be able to understand the operation and characteristic of asynchronous counters. There are three types of asynchronous counter, up counter, mode counter, and down counter. This slide show to you the first type of asynchronous counter. Here we have two bit asynchronous up counter. Look at the true table. We have the clock pulse as an input and the output of the JK flip-flop Q1 and Q0 as the counting sequence. This counter will come from 00, 01, 10 and 11. At the 5 clock, it will recycle the counting sequence to 00. The second thing is the circuit of the 2-bit asynchronous counter. For 2-bit counter, we need two flip-flops. All the input of the flip-flop J and K is connected to the high input. This flip-flop 0 is LSB and flip-flop 1 for MSB. The main clock input will be connected to the flip-flop 0 clock input and output from the flip-flop 0 will connect it to the clock of the next flip-flop. The output of this counter will be taken from the Q0 and Q0. Next, look at waveforms of 2-bit asynchronous counter. We have the clock input waveform for the flip-flop 0 and this flip-flop is working in NGT, negative going transition. So the output is triggered at NGT. When the clock is inputted to the flip-flop 0, the output will be toggled since its input is high. Remember, when the J and K equals to 1 and 1, the output of Q equals to toggle. So we get here, initially the Q0 and Q1 is 0. So at the first NGT, the output will be toggled. And at the second NGT, the output will be toggled and the process is continued for the each clock cycle. And then, the Q0 will be inputted to the clock input of flip-flop 1. So, we take the NGT at Q0 is here and here. So, the output of Q1 will be triggered at NGT of the Q0. When we check the counting sequence from the clock 0, so, the output of the Q0 and Q1 is 0, 0. Clock 1, the output is 0, 1. Next, 1, 0, 1, 1. And recycle back to 0, 0. This slide also show the example of up counters. For 3-bit asynchronous counter, we have 3-bit output. Q0, Q1 and Q3. And for 3-bit counter, we can count from 0, 0, 0 until 1 1 1 which is 7. At the 8 clock pulse, the output will be recycled to 0 0 0. This circuit using PGT JK flip-flop. So we take the clock input for the next flip-flop from the Q bar. The clock input, the blue waveform, will input it to flip-flop 0. This is the LSB and Q2 is the MSB. The output of Q0 here will be triggered at the PGT, positive going transition of the clock input. So here is the output waveform of the Q0. And then for the clock input of the flip-flop number 1 is from Q0 bar. So the Q0 bar signal is like this. The flip-flop 1 will be operate when it get the clock input from the Q0 bar. So, the PGT of the Q0 bar is here. At this point, I mark the PGT of the Q0 bar here. So, the output Q1 will be triggered at the PGT of the Q0 bar. So, we can get the output for the Q1 at Q0 bar PGT. The output of Q1 will be toggle. Next, the clock input of the flip-flop 2 is come from Q1 bar. So, the flip-flop 2 will be operate when it get the input from the Q0 bar. And this flip-flop is operate at PGT. So, the first PGT of Q1 bar is here. And the second PGT is here. 
So the output Q2 will be trigger at the first PGT of Q1 bar and then second PGT of Q1 bar is here. So the output of Q2 will be toggled at this point. And then when we check the output of this counter coming from Q0, Q1 and Q2. So we check the output from waveform Q0, Q1 and Q2 here. So the counting sequence is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. And then the counting sequence recycle back to 0. We have the same counting sequence as showing in truth table. The problem in asynchronous counter is propagation delay and it's not useful at very high frequency. Meaning that when we have more flip-flops in the asynchronous counter, propagation delay will be happen. This slide show to you how the propagation delay happen. As I mentioned before, in order of flip-flop number 1 to working, it have to wait the output from the flip-flop 0 as a clock input for the flip-flop number 1. So this process cause a delay in the circuit. This waveform show the delay at the output Q0 at the first clock cycle. So can you imagine when we have the second clock cycle, the delay will increase because the flip-flop 2 waiting the output from the flip-flop number 1 while flip-flop number 1 waiting the output from the flip-flop 0. So when we have more flip-flops, the delay is getting bigger so it can affect the output sequence so we get the wrong counting sequence. The second types of asynchronous counter is mode counter. Mode is a short form for modulus. Modulus is a number of states that the counter goes through during each complete cycle. The equation of the mode equals to 2 power of n, where n is a number of flip-flops. If we have two flip-flops, so the mode number is 2 power of 2 equals to 4. The counter can count from 0 to 3, and have four counting cycles. If we have three flip-flop, so two power of three equals to eight. So it can come from zero until seven. But how can we build a counter which counts in a number that is not equal to two power of n? For example, mod 10 counter. Okay, for mod 10 counter, we need to use four flip-flops. Why? If we have 4 flip-flops, it can count 2 power of 4 equals to 16. So the counter can come from 0 until 15. But if we have 3 flip-flops, 2 power of 3 equals to 8. It can come from 0 until 7. So 3 flip-flops is not enough to count from 0 until 9. Mod 10 meaning that we count from 0 until 9. So we have to add one more flip-flop to count from 0 until 9 where we need 4 flip-flops. We have to modify this counter so this counter only count from 0 until 9 and recycle after that. To make the counter recycle after the count of 9 is to decode count 10. In binary is 1, 0, 1, 0 where here is the Q3, Q2, Q1 and Q0. So, Q0 and Q2 already 0. We have to force the Q3 and Q1 become 0. How to do that? We connect the Q1 and Q3 to NAND gate here. And then the output of the NAND gate will be inputted to clear input of the flip-flop to clear the value or to force the Q1 and Q3 becomes 0. Here is the timing diagram of asynchronous mode 10 counter. We can see here glitch happen at this area. At the 10 clock cycle, in the normal counting sequence, the value here should be 1, 0, 1, 0. So when we force Q3 and Q1 become 0, there is no problem for Q0 to become 0 because originally it will be go from 1 to 0. But for Q1, originally it should go 1 here. But we force the signal becomes 0. So there is spike 
happen in this cloud number 10 due to the forcing to the flip-flops. This phenomena call as glitch. For Q2, there's no glitch happen here because originally the waveform is zero and we want it become zero. And also same here, from one go to zero. So there's no spike happen or there's no glitch happen at the Q node Q2 and Q3. The third type of asynchronous counter is down counter. For down counter, it will come from the larger number to the lower number. The down counter can be constructed in a similar step as up counters by using the inverted fit flow outputs to drive the following J and K inputs. The difference between the up counter and down counter is the way we connect the clock. This slide shows to you the difference between 3-bit binary up counter and 3-bit binary down counter. We can see the difference at the clock input of each counter. Okay, so that's all the three types of asynchronous counter. That's it for today. See you again next time.